Hi everyone, Relate Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Spirit of the Beehive album, an Entertainment Death. I believe this is the fourth full-length album from Philly band Spirit of the Beehive. Just released via Saddle Creek Records, the first time I heard these guys, though, was on Tiny Engines in 2018 with their record Hypnic Jerks. I admit there wasn't much on that record that I recall to this day, certainly nothing that hit me as hard as various teasers to this. Even the small snippets I was hearing of this record prior to its release made for some of the weirdest and most twisted rock music I had heard in 2021. Lots of psychedelic effects, surreal production, and noise, noise, noise. But when digging further into this LP, I found plenty of passages of beautiful, serene instrumentation too. At a base Line, I think there's plenty of dreamy indie rock vibes coursing through this project that your average Mac DeMarco fan could really get down with. But on top of that, Spirit of the Beehive also deals in the sounds of hypnagogic pop, experimental rock, lo-fi, sound collage seems to influence them heavily too. Animal Collective, Flaming Lips, and numerous sweet but subversive music acts come to mind. The opening track, Entertainment, is such a mind-bending clusterfuck of texture and tone. The abrasive and overwhelming distortion, beats and synthesizers, an ambient guitar interlude too, which gives way to some dejected indie rock. It's a lot of layers, changes, fusions. I guess the question at the end of all of it is whether or not any of it truly sticks or leaves an impression. And the sound of this band is more bold than bland, that's for sure. But in a way, this track is like a micro picture of the rest of the record. Track by track, this project kind of melts into itself quite aggressively, as there's so much bleed between individual passages of songs and the songs themselves. But simultaneously, there's so much separation between all of these tracks too, as the band shifts from booming twisted goth rock on There's Nothing You Can't Do to the blissful indie tronics and, and chill wave vibes of Wrong Circle. Sometimes it doesn't feel like I'm listening to a single group conceiving of all of these ideas, more of like this various artist compilation of Bandcamp bands copied onto a really grubby cassette tape and then dipped multiple times in LSD. One of the biggest guiding principles of this record seems to be keep the audience guessing. Leave them feeling like they're stuck in this odd limbo between being relaxed but also never being able to truly settle because there's never a, a groove, a sound, a vibe that is really truly focused on. Which is genuinely cool if you can pull it off as it it leads to the sound play on this thing being versatile, adventurous, dense, colorful, creative. I can tell the band went through a lot of effort to get this album to sound specifically this way. The track Give Up Your Life, for example, the way the drums hit on this one, they're so heavy, the surreal vocal samples too, the delayed guitar leads along with the warbly lo-fi tone on the guitars and synths for much of the record, the swell of distortion at the intro too, it may sound like a mess but it's a very methodical mess. For as cacophonous as this record is, there's nothing really that sounds out of place. And it never really feels like the band is just throwing random crap at me to distract me or uh, take away from their compositional intentions, which are usually pretty clear. Rapid and Complete Recovery I saw as another example of a track that has, it sounds just so carefully crafted, balanced, and chosen. The smooth and dreamy beat, the soulful horn hits, as well as the trippy synth arpeggios. All the waves and layers of sound on this track just feel like the internet revolution of chill wave in the late 2000s all over again. But as much as I like this and the sound of many other tracks on this record, you know what doesn't really stick out sometimes? The songs the songs. Because what is the writing on a track like Bad Sun, for example, if not a forgettable combination of women and beach fossils? The chord progression on Give Up Your Life is so stale and uninteresting it's patience testing. The vocals aren't much to write home about either, even if they don't seem like the focal point of these tracks much of the time. But if the tune on a given track is solid combined with the sound play being quality, you know, it's just enough to make up for it. The server is immersed 
first, for example. Also, it might take some time. The soup of bass and ghostly vocals on that track, along with the beats and synths, are just oddly beautiful. And the sound of the track only gets prettier as, in the second half, the band introduces these lush orchestral bits that are quickly followed by these disorienting guitar arrangements topped with vocals that sound very AV tear esque. Wake Up in Rotation is maybe the catchiest track here, despite it sounding so warped. I mean, the structure and lead vocals are pretty direct, at least more direct than the bulk of the material here. Though, once again, the band does lean pretty hard on animal collective worship in the second half. But the experimental and out of control crown jewel on the last leg of the record comes in the form of the seven minute. <laughs> I suck the devil's cock. Well, it's almost seven minutes, and the cycling guitar line and beat, as well as demonic vocals the whole thing kicks off with, are incredible. Some of the most intense sounds on the entire LP. But the track does not stop there. From this point, it shifts pretty radically into bright ambience, grim post-punk mutant dream pop as well, which is okay, I guess. The piece ultimately ends up being this very weird ear candy, though it is somewhat disappointing disappointing to realize there's not much else to this track other than being difficult to pin down. The closing cut death leaves us off with a haunting little mantra to sit on, as in just a few words the band manages to make one of the most salient points on the entire project. Entertainment death, relating working on entertainment or being entertainment to pain, then relating love and obsession and interest in someone or something to uh, just a chemical change. Through that lens, one may even be able to interpret this record as a dystopian meta-statement on making music for commercial consumption, possibly, or just any art in general. That being said, though, I did enjoy the record overall and found it relatively entertaining. There were some great tracks on here, some sonic and production ideas that to me bordered on genius. I just think there needs to really be a little bit more focus on the songwriting and making that element of the equation pop a bit more at some point in the future. Uh, thinking I'm uh, at about a decent seven on this one. Tran, Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe, and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Spirit of the Beehive, uh, forever.